Here's what the scripture says when you feel insecure. Exodus 3 7-4-17 Exodus 3 7-4-17 says, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was leprous, it had become as white as snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored, like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, What about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth, 
I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand so you can perform the signs with it. This passage from Exodus 3 7 to 4 17 portrays God's encounter with Moses at the burning bush and Moses' call to deliver the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. God reveals his compassion for the suffering of the Israelites and his plan to rescue them from oppression. Despite Moses' initial reluctance and self-doubt, God assures him of his presence and provides miraculous signs to validate his authority. Through these signs, God demonstrates his power and authority, encouraging Moses to trust in his guidance and fulfill his role as the deliverer of Israel. God's conversation with Moses highlights several key themes, including God's faithfulness to his promises, his compassion for his people, and his empowerment of individuals for their calling. The passage emphasizes the importance of obedience and trust in God's plan, even when faced with uncertainty or personal insecurities. Moses' journey from reluctance to acceptance illustrates the transformative power of God's presence and his ability to equip his chosen ones for their mission. Exodus 3 7 to 4 17 is a portrayal of God's faithfulness, compassion, and empowerment. The encounter between God and Moses serves as a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness and provision in times of uncertainty. It encourages us to trust in God's guidance and to step forward in faith, even when faced with daunting challenges or personal insecurities. The passage emphasizes the importance of embracing our calling and relying on God's strength to overcome obstacles and fulfill our purpose. Just as God equipped Moses for his mission, he equips us with everything we need to navigate through life's uncertainties and make a meaningful impact in the world. Exodus 3 7-4 17 Remember that, when you feel insecure, 